Hi you guys, welcome back to another First Impression Friday video where I review an entire collection of sewing patterns for fit, fabrication, overall design, and a bunch of other fun stuff. Uh, today we're going to be doing something a little bit different and reviewing a um, pattern company on Etsy. I'm not sure if you're familiar, but Etsy has a lot of really great indie pattern companies that are popping up on its website and I've been wanting to review one for a while. So today we're going to look at Marilla Walker. I hope I'm saying that right. Maria. I don't know if there is like some kind of like accent to her name. Um, but I went to read her little bio and, and really loved it. I thought it was a lot of good information here. But she says she designs contemporary women's fashion that's both wearable and beautifully made. She graduated with a degree in fashion and textile design and has been developing her designs into home sewing patterns. She says, I look to the beautiful lines seen in Scandinavian and Japanese design for my main inspiration, but there's also a Central American influence in there somewhere, which I hope is evident. So I thought those details um, were really nice about, you know, kind of how she's influenced um, by her designs. And hopefully, like she says, we will be able to see that when we look at them. So it looks like right now there is a sale. I don't know if that happens all the time or what uh, the, the kind of premise for the sale is, but you can get 28% off her patterns right now. And the first one we're going to look at is the Iska, Iska shirt dress sewing pattern. Um, okay, so obviously Etsy works a little bit different than like a site that you host yourself in that everything is like laid out for you. You just fill out a little form and then it pops it into certain places. So give me a little bit of patience while I work my way through where all the information that we usually go over is located. I think I've got it all here. So we will look at that. There's a size chart over there. Okay, good. All right. So first up, Iska, 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 Iska. Um, I love that there is the phonetic um, little helper there to help me know how to say that. Um, but it's got a couple of views. It says view A is a shirt dress, which is very fitted at the shoulders and relaxed at the waist. The waist seam is higher at the front and lower at the back for a flattering drape. The dress has three quarter length sleeves and a gathered skirt, collar and stand, separate button bands, shoulder reinforcements, deep yoke front pockets, lap seams, front and back skirt gathers, and double turned hips on sleeves and skirt. It can be worn true to size or a couple sizes up for a cool oversized look. View B is a semi-loose fitting, semi -loose fitting draped front shirt dress with bust and back shoulder shaping. The sleeves are three quarter length and the waist adjustable with a draped wrapped, a draped wrap that ties to the left hand side of the dress. The neckline features a neck band with center front fastening. Other features are the shoulder reinforcements, patch shirt pockets, lapped seams, back waist darts, and double turned hems on sleeve and skirt. So it sounds to me like view A and B are pretty much completely different dresses. And I think that looking at this um, line drawing, it is exactly that. Um, I mean, they are completely different dresses outside of what is happening. I'm sorry, this is like moving too much. Outside of what is happening, like above the bust, like pretty much two different dresses. So this is view A right here, um, the one on top. And you can see it's got that kind of like half placket thing into a gathered skirt. I love that skirt pocket detail. Um, and then the yokes make for a very interesting kind of design detail as well. But view B is like totally different and really kind of cool. It's like a robe in the front, but in the back, it's still got the shaping and is fitted like you want it to. Um, so that is really, really interesting. Let's look at some of these photos so this is view a very clearly view a look how cool those deep 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 pockets are love that that reminds me a lot of the pocket skirt from peppermint magazine but she's got hers buttoned all the way up and you can get a really good look at this beautiful collar with the stand um, because there's a collar stand you can see how well it stands up and holds its shape and you know rolls over beautifully you know all of that there is that kind of like yoke design in the front, this that's happening along here, um, which is a little bit hard to see whenever you sew it out of the same fabrics. 
but I think that that might be there more for fit than necessarily design, but you could definitely add some really cool piping. You could obviously do some color blocking there and have a really fun, unique design. And same thing with those that are on the back right here. Beautiful set in sleeve. Obviously this is very well made and it fits her really well. I'm happy to see all of that. This white version, it's really hard to photograph white. Um, it's hard for me to see exactly what's going on, but I think we can kind of put it together. Let's see if there are any better pictures. No, not really. I do, oh, that one's kind of better. Um, yeah, it, this is just such an interesting design, not like anything we normally see, but it's got this um, kind of like placket or band uh, detail. She does have it buttoned here, which, uh, I don't know, that causes its own sort of issues whenever you like force it to be closed at a certain point. Um, but you can really see all the work that these seams are doing in terms of fitting. Um, and then the wrap design here. What else? And then back to the line drawings, but we also have body measurements. So in inches, gosh, that's hard to read. Oh, here we go. Um, we've got a 29 inch high bust, 29 and a half inch. Let's look at full bust, 31 to 48 inches in the bust. So not terrible. Certainly not the best we've seen in terms of size inclusivity there. The hips are 34 to 50. Um, that's not, that's not the best. Um, I think at this point, if you are a size inclusive pattern company, you're going up to mid sixties. Um, and this is a, this is far, far from that. Um, so that's a little bit disappointing. Um, but I mean, it is what it is, right? Um, for what it's worth, I mean, this is a pretty straight design, so I don't think that having large, like being pear-shaped or whatever, having larger hips really matters too much, but um, I think that I would be maybe seven, eight, nine. That's how I would make mine. Seven, eight, nine. Um, does she give us any finished measurements? No, we're back to the, to the front again, or to the, whatever, you know what I mean, the first photo. Um, suitable fabrics are light to medium weight fabrics, such as shirting, cotton, linen, or chambray. Um, here's how much fabric you need. Interfacing, same for B. This is ra uh, rated intermediate, as there are a lot of steps. Yeah, but are those steps difficult? Hmm. That's an interesting way to rate your patterns, right? Oh, sale ends in two hours. Well, by the time this gets uploaded there will not be a sale anymore. <laughs> I can just tell you guys that now. So if you go there and these sale prices aren't the same, it's because I obviously recorded this a couple days ago. All right, next up we have the PDF Robert's Collection Sewing Dress Making Pattern. Does this one not have a name? Just number six? Okay. Um, this listing is for, okay. This is an uber comfortable, modern and stylish mini collection of dressmaking patterns. Oh, this is the Roberts collection. I see, I see, I see, I see. Okay, so this is a bundle. How is the bundle the same price as one individual pattern? All right, well, the design details are echoed and repeated throughout each of the four garments to form cohesive wardrobe staples that are really fun and easy to wear. The style is oversized and baggy with dropped waist or crotch and all over roomy fit. View A is a jumpsuit with cap sleeves, small front hip pleats, top, stop, top stitch neck facings, front button fastening, front pockets, and seam detail on the bodice back. View B are dungarees or overalls. Key features are slim shoulder straps, small front hip pleats, front pockets, and side popper fastening. I don't know what a side popper is. Snaps? Um, then there's a overall dress, slim shoulder straps, front pockets, side popper fastening, and then two lengths to choose from, knee length and mid calf, and then a woven t-shirt, uh, cap sleeves, top stick neck fakey scenes, and seam detail on the bodice back. That's wild to me that there are so many patterns all in one, but jumpsuit, 
dungarees, dungaree dress in two lengths, and your top. And then if we look at the versions that she's made, um, so you've got a pretty generous bib here. I think that that has been some of the, you know, if I could, you know, say anything about some of the other indie um, dungarees that are out there, it's that the bibs are also narrow. I like how kind of wide this one is. There are pleats here. This feels really low, though, this seam. I still would like to see it at the natural waist. Um, then you've got your pockets. And I guess that is the knee length. It's a little long. Um, little straps going into this triangle piece. I love the triangle piece. And then here are your snaps on the side. Just two of them, which, again, doesn't really feel like enough. Um, shouldn't this be going down to the waist or I'm sorry to the hip I would be worried no matter how like loose fitting it is that it wouldn't be enough for me but it is finished beautifully it's like a like a proper you know uh, almost like a fly I mean what do you guys think you think un unbuttoning just those two snaps would be enough to get it over hips I mean, this is sitting at the high hip, so, I mean, maybe, maybe that's why this sits so low. This is obviously the pants version. Um, she did say that it, it included a drop crotch, so I'm not expecting for this to be super fitted in the crotch area. I'm glad that she called that out, that it was specifically designed that way. Again, here, normally I would be like, whoa, the crotch is way too long, but... She specifically said, designed to have an oversized drop crotch kind of feel, um, a baggy feel. This is really pretty. The neckline is, I think that's like a grown on sleeve. I would have liked to see a photo of her standing like this, but in the pants, just so you can see like, well, I guess there's that, but you know, from the front, I'd like to be able to see like, how low the crotch really is and kind of what that does to proportions. Drop crotches are a risky move. A risky move for sure. Um, oh, but look at how cool the back design is on the top. Oh, and on the jumpsuit. Yeah, I don't know that this one is for me, but I can definitely see it being like super cool, super chic on other people I would just be too worried about how low the the seam is here she did say it was a waist seam but it feels like more like a high hip and then the drop crotch makes me real nervous real nervous but um she has the bust 31 to 49 again hips 34 to 51 on this one and then your fabric requirements in centimeters Okay. Cute idea for sure. Um, then she has, I love this, fabric requirements for each view. Um, I think that that is so, so, so important. And then again, intermediate um, for, because there's a lot of steps and some advanced seam finishes. Okay. Cute. Oh, photos from reviews. This is also something really cool that... Um, Etsy does so that what that's not so bad right I think that you just have to embrace the bagginess and just know that this is intended to be very oversized and if you do that then I don't know it doesn't seem that bad that's the little top how cute are these all the same pattern there's another one Sam Smith. Oh, no. I, this one looks like it's made out of, like, a sweatshirting. So this is a little bit like, you know, when we take a look at the um, tester versions, it's a little bit what this is like. Okay, so it is all kinds mixed in, so we don't want to give away too much, but you can go through and see um, actual people wearing them which I actually quite like. I like that in addition to the designer making her own samples 
to fit her body or her model's body or whatever. I like both. I know that's asking <laughs> a lot, but that's just what I like, okay? All right, this is the Mercury Collection sewing pattern. Looks like we have four items here. Each piece of this mini summer collection is inspired by the relaxed and unapologetically roomy shapes present in Scandinavian and Japanese fashion. Choose soft flowing fabrics for a light breezy wardrobe of clothes that are a joy to wear. The woven trousers are high waisted and either a long wide leg or baggy slightly cropped leg. What do we think the difference between wide leg and baggy is? The waistband has a neat fixed front and the comfort of elastic around the back. The woven top complements the trousers perfectly with its high low hem, great wardrobe builder. The sleeves are kept long with a choice of cuff or an all year round staple and the back can either be left plain or with a decorative split. The fit is easy with a focus on ease of movement and a flattering shape that skims over the body. So key features of A, um, round neck, long sleeves, plain sleeve end, back split, neck and hem facings. View B, round neck, long sleeves, deep turn up cuff, plain back, neck and hem facings. View C has a wide full length leg with front pleats, pockets and elasticized, or sorry, elasticated back waist. And view D has a baggy cropped ankle length leg with pin tucks around the hem. Oh, and front pleats at the waist pockets and elasticated back waist. Okay, let's take a look at what all that means. So here are our line drawings. We've got the two tops, um, pretty much the same, except this one has a turned up cuff, and then this one has the split in the back. Oh, and then we've got the wide leg, or you can do this one with this like interesting um, pleat detail at the bottom that causes it to kind of come in, also a little bit shorter. There's also elastic in the back, but it's flat on the front. So there are our pants and the top of A, I believe. They are high-waisted. You can definitely see how high up they come on her. Oh, not nearly as wild as I thought. Also not nearly as cropped as I thought. And then there's the top of A with a little split in the back. I love that detail. This is the um, pin tuck pant as well and the wide leg on the left there interesting so didn't she say one of them was full length and one of them was cropped i mean even in the line drawings one is cropped so that's a little hmm suspect but if you look at the fit of these i mean we've got a perfectly straight side seam We've got a beautiful fitting crotch, even though she has her hands in her pockets. <laughs> we talked about this a lot a couple weeks ago. Look, hands in pockets, hands in pockets. Why? I need to be able to see how these fit without any hands there. That makes me feel like the other, the other time we looked at this and I was complaining about the hands in the pockets, I think it was because the pants were too tight and people were putting their hands in their pockets to like help the crotch look as best as it could this i feel like actually has a really great crotch but i think she's putting her hands in her pockets you know this is me being a conspiracy theorist here because the pockets are puckering open you know what i mean um they aren't laying flat they aren't laying closed but that's just me making up excuses for why people take all the photos of their pants with their hands in their pockets um, but yeah, some really good, good pictures here. Um, I just wish she didn't have her hands in her pockets there and they would be a plus plus from me, but here are the body measurement charts. Same as we've seen, um, nothing new there. And then fabric quantities are also listed there. And then if we come down here, you can see more information about fabric requirements. Um, and then she talks about interfacing and specifically what you need. So for the tops, you need lightweight fusible and for the bottoms, you need a heavyweight fusible. Um, and then view A, here are your fabric requirements for A and B, the tops, and then the bottoms. Um, so sort of like a lighter weight flowy pant, um, and a little bit more structured of a top and then intermediate as well. Cute.
and different, right? Not something we see a lot. Okay, next up we have the, oh, belemnite? Belemnite? Where does the emphasis on the syllable? Which syllable gets the emphasis? Belemnite, belemnite, belem, belem, whatever. <laughs> View A, yeah, where's my phonics here? Where's my phonetical pronunciation little helper here? Um, easy fitting, fit and flare dress with long gathered sleeves and an A line, lantern shaped skirt. Lantern shaped skirts are not my favorite, but we'll take a look. There are self fabric ties at the waist, zip closure in the back, and the B neck is finished with a facing. View B, easy fitting, fit and flare shirt style dress with grown on sleeves, ruffle cuff, and an A-line lantern shaped skirt. Self fabric ties at the waist, button front closure, and the neckline is finished with a facing. There's also a bonus sleeve. Um, view A with extra sleeve volume. Instructions for a wide elastic cuff and ribbed fabric cuff. Views A and B are completely interchangeable should you prefer the sleeve option of one with the closure from another. Okay. All right. So, okay. So this is a lantern skirt, but not nearly as crazy as I've seen in the past. Some of them are really pronunciated here um, and really come in at the hem. This one's not so bad. But you can see all these beautiful little style lines. You get this little bib. You do not have a set in sleeve, so that makes it a lot easier to sew. Um, you just have this grown on sleeve here that either finishes in this elastic or with these, are those pleats or gathers or something. Um, and then one is cut on the center fold and the other one is cut with a button placket. Um, although the button placket only goes down to here and not all the way to the hem. I think that's fine. I don't, I don't mind that, right? I mean, you're only really unbuttoning it to like this button here anyways. So yeah. And then you have the ties that tie in the back. Really straightforward. Here is view A. See the lantern, well, it's kind of windy, but the lantern you can see is not causing it to like look like a bubble, which is what I thought when I first read it. That's really pretty. And it looks like these are some kind of pleats in the sleeve. I love that the sleeve has a bit of like a curve to it too. It's just not a, you know, straight round um, seam there. So that's kind of cool. Lots of buttons. There it is in the back. I don't think you, I mean, I guess the ties can cinch it in a little bit, but it's not really doing much. I don't think. Really pretty sleeve. And I love how the volume is really just on the side here because we have this seam. Like sometimes when they have these big dolman sleeve patterns and um, there's no seam here, it's all one piece, a lot of that volume gets transferred oddly to like the neckline or I don't know, into weird places and it feels vo like volume everywhere. But because we have this little bib, the volume is really, you know, just on this one arm or just through the arm, which I think is really cool. Zipper up the back. Oh, there's the wide elastic. Look how cool that is with that um, voluminous sleeve. Love that detail. This is a really cute dress. Oh, look, and there's the rib knits, the rib knit cuffs. That's interesting. Wow. Okay, cool. Um, 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 actual body measurement chart is the same as the first one. I mean, the hips have a half inch more. Um, and then, oh, size range two. Okay. So this is interesting. She's got this one size range. That's what we've been talking about. And then this pattern actually comes in women's sizes as well. And it's six to 14 with a D cup. So that's very, okay. So that means the full bust is 42 up to 58, a lot better. And the hips are 44 to 60. So that's a lot more inclusive there. Um, you could also, I think, just swap out the, like if you're plus size, but have a smaller breast bust, I think you could just 
swap out the B cup panel for the D cup and vice versa, I think. Um, you'd have to look at your pattern pieces, but that's what it seems like to me. So that's cool. She does have an extended size range available, um, but not on all patterns. So cool. All right. And then intermediate, because there's a lot of steps, lightweight interfacing, zippers, buttons, thread, stay tape for the neckline. That's a good sign when they include some of these things to help with the um, construction. Okay, great. Bellum Knight, Bellum Knight. Those of you, she lives in the UK in reading. If you guys, is this like a place or a street or something? If you guys can help me pronounce it, that would be awesome. All right, this is the Maya dress and top sewing pattern. Pretty standard boxy top, it looks like. The Maya pattern takes its influence from my Central American mother and family. It has a cap sleeve dress or a top that's designed to hang well from the shoulders and have a wide fit from the bust down, much like a traditional Guatemalan hoople, whoop, hoo, hoo, a pill, hoo, mm, guys, I don't know how to say that. I've never even seen that word before. I don't even know what this is. Hoopel? It's intended to be playful and fun and can really showcase an amazing fabric, whether that be a bold print or luscious fiber. Although relatively simple in design, yes, the variations are endless and there are several lengths to choose from, ranging from crop top to knee length dress with a hip length top and shorter dress length in between. Other variants include a straight or shaped hem, button or plain front, as well as an option for a sash belt. Uh, the construction is straightforward and creates a tidy finish as you work through the instructions, leaving no raw edges in sight. So I love that. Basic pattern, but you take the time to finish it really well. Um, so what could be done in like 30 minutes, you're spending a lot more time and attention to detail on it, meaning it's finished better, it's going to last longer, it's going to look prettier, you know, all of that. So here are your views, the button front, these are cut on the fold, different lengths, four different lengths, and then the optional tie belt. Here are all the versions that she has made. Look how cool this one is with the pocket like bleached out. Then there's the dress with the little hip pockets. That must be the hip link top, maybe the crop top, belted version. Here is the view where um, it's cut on the fold with the little tie. Oh, I love the little hem, how it's lower in the back. <clears throat> okay, actual body measurements for this. Um, I guess there's only the sizes 1 through 10. Um, and the same relative sizes that we've seen so far. Okay. All right, that's it. A little disappointing that for such a basic pattern, she doesn't have it in the two size ranges, but... Um, okay, this pattern would be suitable for an advanced beginner as there are elements to take your time over, such as the top stitched facings and the button plackets, but there's nothing too crazy and nothing that can't be completed on a standard sewing machine. Awesome. All right, light to medium weight woven fabric. And... Okay, we already read all that. Okay, cool. All right. Last up, we have the Honatone. <laughs> Hone tone. Oh gosh. Honnet one? Honnet? Oh gosh. Either way, it is a jacket pattern. I can never pronounce the name. Oh look! Honey tone. Honey tone? I need is there supposed to be an accent over that? <laughs> a fully lined, grown on sleeve, thigh length, straight cut coat with interesting pocket details and button front fastening. Pocket one, optional, is an inserted pocket to simply pop your hands in, and the lower pocket two is a large patch pocket. What's an inserted pocket? Does that mean inseam? Oh, I don't know what that means. Um, to store all your bits and pieces. Some speed tailoring and hand stitch finishes make this good quality garment, which will last and keep its integrity for years to come. 
Uh, B is an unlined grown on sleeve hip length straight cut jacket with interesting pocket detail and button front fastening. The pocket is an inserted pocket to simply pop your hands in a simple construction with lots of feature top stitching. Details can be magnified with a high contrast top stitching thread. All right. So yeah, really straightforward. It reminds me a lot of the, is it the maker's jacket, maker jacket? Um, not a lot of design details not a lot of like fit or shaping or any of that it's meant to be very oversized and kind of hang from the shoulder like we've been talking about with a lot of her patterns really um but when you have it on you can tell that it does hang really well from the shoulders it's not too like i don't know too balloony or too much of anything it's kind of just it just drapes really nicely but it is oversized it's not meant to be fitted um, I like this little turn back collar. That's cool. So this is what an inserted pocket is. How cool is that? I've never even seen that before, but it almost looks like a frame or like a window when um, you put that in. Lots of fun top stitching like she mentioned. Look at this fun little top stitching detail up here. Really, really cool. Here's the back. Oh, look at that fun, fun, fun fabric. Yeah, she did mention sustainable wools, and this one's fully lined as well. Yeah, you really do get two, two bang-on options for coats here. Um, I wanted to see if she did um, bound buttonholes, but I can't really tell. Well, let me zoom in. Yeah, I can't really tell. I don't think so. I think that those are just on your sewing machine. But yeah, it's really beautiful. The same little turn-back collar. Love it. Love it. Really cute, really simple, comfortable, just throw on and go type of thing. All right, and then we've got your fabric requirements and this rated advanced as there are a lot of steps and techniques for the line coat. The denim jacket is a suitable for intermediate sewer. So that is going to do it. That is all of the patterns from Marilla, Maria Walker, Marilla Walker, um, would love to know what you guys think of this small but mighty collection. I mean, there's only like five listings, but, or six listings, but a lot of patterns in there, right? Um, did you pick up on the Scandinavian? Did you pick up on, you know, the Japanese influence? Um, I did. I did for sure. I think that comes a lot with like the style lines and the kind of overall bagginess, um, but it's still, although they're oversized, they still looked flattering. So that's my thoughts on that. But I'd love to know what you think. Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Otherwise, that's going to do it for me today, y'all. And I will see you all very soon. Bye.